welcome back everybody to Why Team Stories. I'm super excited to be interviewing our next interviewee for this week and he's a personal favourite of mine, not that you're all not personal favourites, but uh, this guy and I, we've shared some awesome moments on the road together, facilitated together, learned a lot more about each other and I just can't wait for him to share his knowledge with you guys today. His name is Nathan Bassett or otherwise known as Freddie B. Freddie B, can you just uh, introduce yourself, let us know where you're from, what school you went to, and also um, just your journey with Y Leader for the past few years? I've been pretty lucky to be on a, be on a pretty amazing journey with Y Lead, but where I started, um, my journey was, I went to Narangra Valley High, um, and I graduated in 2008, a few years ago now. Moving from there, I sort of navigated the world um, outside of high school, and then moved into a pretty cool space into Ryla. Um, Ryla was at the in the middle of 2014 and Wiley came out and did a presentation there. And at the end of the presentation, um, they did a travel pitch to go to Tanzania. And I was like, that would be amazing. Um, I really want to go to Tanzania. So with the, the hype of Ryla still going, I signed up to Tanzania and I went over at the end of 2014 and the start of 2015 and uh, absolutely fell in love with what uh, Wiley does. Um, from there, at the end of 2015, I went to New Zealand as a mentor on Thrill Out. At the end of 2016, I went to Cambodia as a mentor on uh, Help Out. And then from there, I did a heap of in-schools, um, worked a lot with uh, the, the team and and put a lot of, uh, put a lot of hours into the in-school work. After that, uh, our old CEO, Matt, um, sent me an email and he said, do you want to go to Canberra? to do some facilitating. So I've been working as a contract facilitator ever since then, which has been pretty amazing. Um, I've learned a lot about myself and learned a lot about leadership and learned a lot about standing in front of crowds and talking and something I never thought I'd do, which is pretty cool. And then after that, um, I've been really, really fortunate to lead the Tanzania immersion trip for the last two years over to Africa, take some pretty cool people over to Africa, climb Kilimanjaro and do some amazing things over there. And alongside that, just still doing contract facilitating whenever the team need me and um, being involved with the Y team as much as possible. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nate. We uh, love having you around as a contractor and we're also very, very grateful for you stepping up to be our Tanzanian Immersion Tour Leader over the past few years. Another question for you, for the people that don't know you all that well, what are three words that you would use to describe yourself? So three words that uh, I would use to describe me. Uh, number one is adventurous. Um, I'd love to go out and adventure and see different uh, parts of the world. Obviously overseas, but also around Australia. I ride motorbikes, so trying to find different places to go to in all around Queensland and uh, into New northern New South Wales is pretty amazing when we're allowed to, uh, when we're out of isolation. Uh, the second one is courageous. Um, I like to take on as many challenges as I can and really push myself and push myself outside my comfort zone and really learn about I learn a lot about myself by pushing myself outside my comfort zone. And the third one is inclusive. Something that means a lot to me is, is including everyone in all the different group things that we do. And um, not just at Wiley, but also in my working life and my university life as well. Just being inclusive of everyone that, that is in the space and, and ensuring that their ideas and their thoughts are heard and, and to let them know that they're um, valued as part of whatever environment I'm in. I can definitely attest to your inclusiveness, um, particularly Nate has been quite renowned on his trips to Tanzania for making people feel like a really great part of the group and making them feel comfortable from day one, which is uh, definitely an incredible trait that I would describe you as as well. Next question is, I really like this one. If you were a tour guide in your hometown for the day, where would you take us and what would you do? If I was a tour guide in my own hometown, so I live in Narangbar in Queensland. Narangbar is pretty small, but there's a really cool lookout at the top of Narangbar that sort of looks out over the whole of Narangbar and then over sort of the wider, <clears throat> pardon me, Morton Bay area, um, over onto Morton Island, which is uh, really cool if it's if it's clear for that day. I love going up there and just sort of contemplating life, and it's something that I used to do a lot with my mates and sort of just have a chat and, and learn a lot about each other and and just sort of get away. And it feels like you're out in the country, but you're only like 10 minutes up the road. So I definitely go there um, and just sort of, yeah, have a chat with people and really enjoy their company. 
what is a lesson that you're currently learning or something that you're just taking on board um, over the past few weeks that yeah you've been processing a lesson that you've been thinking about recently a lesson that i've learned recently um, especially in these really uncertain times is to be able to control what i can control and let what i can't control go being able to control a lot of things in my life is something that i like to do a lot and obviously with all the different changes we've had and the shutdown of the country it's really hard to control those things and i've had to let go of a lot of things i can't control so i can't control that my university was changed i can't control that i can't work as much as i used to i can't control that you know i couldn't go outside and and i couldn't go out out of the house so i couldn't control that and i i had to learn to let that go and I had to learn to let that not control how i was feeling so not let the the uncontrollable things control me and then on the same token is to be able to control what I can control. So for me, um, I can control what time I get out of bed in the morning. I can control what I put in my mouth when I eat the food that I want to eat. I can control um, how much I can move my body inside my house. So if I want to do some exercise, I can control that. I can control my mindset of how I'm feeling on the day. So if um, you know, you're sitting at home and you're scrolling through Facebook and you're bored, I can control that I want to get up and, and actually go and do something. So being able to control the controllable and let the uncontrollable go has been my big lesson. Yeah, I love that. And um, for those of us that, that might find it quite challenging to let those uncontrollable things go, do you have any tips for how you just find that place where you can just sit with it and know this isn't something I can control, I have to let it go? Any tips for those people that might just be struggling with that? If you know me, you know I love going to the gym. Um, and when they shut the gyms down, I was like, you know, I can't do anything. I've lost all my gains for the year. It's sitting with it and realizing that there are things you can do. And it's being creative and coming up with different ideas and, and, and not allowing the negative thoughts to control how you react to the situation. And realizing that there are different steps you can do or different activities you can do to overcome that, that thing that's been put in front of you. My next question is, what's something that has made you laugh this week? So something that's made me laugh in the last week was actually last night. I went out motorbike riding with my mates, which has been uh, something I've wanted to do for a while. And there's been four of us that haven't been able to go out all together for the last, um, actually a long time, because one of my mates has been living overseas, but he's back now. And it was just really cool to, to be with them and just to sort of forget about everything that's going on and just be able to talk with them and have a chat and have a laugh and just really enjoy each other's company. And, you know, as mates do, talk back and forth, a bit of banter between each other really made the night and, and we were able to laugh a lot about uh, what was going on and sort of uh, the different things that happened during the night. Yeah, I think we can all uh, look forward to hanging out with friends over the next few weeks and having a bit of a laugh. What is one thing that you must accomplish in the next two years and why? It's a really good question and it's something that um, if you asked me at the start of the year, it would be completely different to what the answer would be now. So um, I'm meant to be in my last year of university to be a math and geography teacher. That's obviously been changed a little bit at the moment. So my big thing for the next two years is to finish my university degree. That's number one. Number two is really cement where I want to go with the, the path that I'm on and to understand what line of work um, it will be that will give me the most satisfaction with what I'm doing and, and sort of understanding where that path is going. Um, that would be number two. Number three, I've got a lot of fitness goals that I want to hit. And so really nail down um, what I can do to be able to achieve those things. So number one, finish uni. Number two, find out what I want to do, where I want my career path to go. And number three, really nail down those fitness goals. So if you were in a packet of Wiley texters, right? And it was, you know, like a consistent packet, not like a, a whole yellow packet like we sometimes come across or ones that just have none of the colors that we need. But if it was, yeah, a full packet of Wiley texters, what color texter would you be? So if I was in a packet of Wiley texters, um, I would be the color blue. I, I'm obviously starting to be a teacher and the color blue for me is a really dependable color. Um, it's something that I depend on a lot to write on the board and to use throughout the classroom and it's very noticeable, it's very versatile um, and it's something that is just, it's, it's always there, it's always there, it's always something I use. So I'd, I'd love to feel like um, I'm dependable and I'm versatile and um, I'm always there, I'm always there to help out, I'm always there to just be there, to be there to help out and yeah, I feel like that's, that's me. All right, Nate, we're about to move into our fast five. So we're both going to go off mute 
and we're just gonna throw back question and answer for the next five questions. Literally just answer with the first thing that comes into your head. Don't even think about it too much. We're just gonna go for it, all right? So question one is, what is your favorite food? Favorite food is definitely pizza. Oh, I love it. What kind of, what's on the pizza? Anything specific? Oh, it's the classic meat lovers and with like all the extra toppings. And it's gotta be like the real thick pizza, love it. Oh, delicious, so good. Favorite destination? This will be interesting to hear. Yeah, favorite destination, there's a few, but um, Tanzania has my heart, so I'd say Tanzania for sure. Yeah, I'm with you there, buddy, I love it. All right, next question is, what's your favorite band or artist? This is a really hard one because I listen to so many different ones. Um, if I'm in like a gym mode, something like Breaking Benjamin or something like that, if anyone knows that one. Um, or if I'm like in a chill mode, it's uh, there's a few. Like just if you search Chill Step on Spotify, that's my jam. Or if I'm in like a, I just want to listen to some like really cool tunes, it's the Eagles. Yeah, so good. None of these artists I know, but I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, your favorite movie? Oh, favorite movie. That's a really good one. Inception. Oh, great movie. Great soundtrack on that as well. Love it. Love uh, love last one is favorite color. Favorite color. Um, it was always red growing up, but it, I have actually changed my favorite color to blue. Yeah, love it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nate. Just to finish us off today, you mentioned throughout the interview that you're really, really passionate about your health and well-being, and particularly over the past few years, you've created a really great relationship with powerlifting. And I know that every single time we go to schools and we talk about how much you deadlift or how much you bench, the kids literally are just like, what? But the first question I wanted to ask you around that is, what actually got you into, into powerlifting in the first place? I was quite overweight when I went to Ryla. And when I signed up to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, I'm like, man, I'm really gonna need to do some training. And I remember my first training session with a PT was uh, brutal and I was quite sick afterwards. And I was like, man, I really need to push this pretty hard so I can achieve what I want to achieve. Um, I went from PT to Les Mills, which is like a group um, virtual or a group um, training session, then went to CrossFit. And it just so happened that my CrossFit coach, who still is my powerlifting coach at the moment, was Australia's under 75 kilo um, national champion. He got me into powerlifting and got me into moving my body. And, and we did this thing called the CrossFit Open where, where it's a worldwide thing, everyone can participate. And I said to him at the end of it, I was like, hey, I want to get stronger. I want to be better at the Open. He goes, you know what? I'll put you on a powerlifting program. And I was like, no, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And then in my mind, I was like, you know, I'm still going to CrossFit because I really like it. And uh, I did the eight week program. I went from an 80 kilo squat to 130 kilo squat. I went from a 50 kilo bench to a 75 kilo bench. And then I went from a 120 kilo deadlift to 165 kilo deadlift in eight weeks, just being learning, learning how to use my body. Um, so I, I had the strength previously. I just didn't know the motor patterns for my body. And um, those sort of results aren't typical in powerlifting. Once you make those newbie gains, it doesn't happen again. So I, I, uh, I, revel I, I really loved it while it happened. But I got to the end of the eight weeks and I was like, man, like all I did there was just put in work and the results showed. And I was like, this is epic. And then I was started to look around at like different people that were doing the powerlifting. And I was like, you know what, I could do this. So I've stayed with my coach ever since and kept going with it and my current best i've got a, a 182 squat i've got a 102 bench and a 235 deadlift you guys couldn't see me then but i basically just like passed out on the floor from hearing those numbers i just uh oh, it blows me away and i love nathan how humble you are about it and you just say you know you just got to put in the hard work and the results show um and it is so true but i think sometimes as a society we need to be reminded of that um and so my my last final question for you today is Number one, how do you do that? How do you keep that mindset so strong? And then what other areas of your life have you found that mindset has played into and really helped you out? A lot of people are like, oh, how do you go to the gym every day? Or how do you get up and go and do that work? And I never really cemented what it was until I heard a, a guy called Jocko Willink and he said, discipline equals freedom. And for me, that's what it is. It's discipline and doing what I know I need to do to achieve what I want to achieve. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And I can tell you that now, if you start yourself on a fitness journey, there'll be times where you wake up, like I was yesterday, I'm like, oh, I do not want to go and do this. And I'm in the deload week at the moment, so I don't have to do much, but I just don't want to do it, right? 
but I knew I had to do that. I knew it's something I had to do to be able to keep up with my program, to be able to make sure that my body's still working properly. So I got out of bed and I went and did it. And it's something that sort of transferred over to my whole life. A lot of the work I do, just a lot of the uni work I do, I don't necessarily want to do it. Sometimes it's not that interesting, but you do it. You do it because you have to do it and you do it because you're disciplined enough to do it. You hear people say, oh, you've got a lot of, a lot of willpower and all that sort of stuff. And no, I don't. I'm just very disciplined in what I'm doing. And I'm not perfect in that. And I know I'm not perfect in that. And sometimes I let that discipline fall by the wayside, but I have to then, you know, catch myself, jump back on the wagon and do it. And that's where my mindset's changed from where I was five years, five to six years ago now to where I am now um, is through discipline and through dedication to what I want to do. And a lot of that comes from setting goals and then going relentlessly after those goals. So if I set a goal and I don't achieve it, I find a way around that and then find out how I can achieve it. And I talk, you know, very closely with the people around me on how to do that, which is it's pretty, pretty important to have a really tight knit group around you as well. Um, so that they can help you through it. You're not going to have all the answers and it's important to talk to the people that do have the answers to help you through the times where you're not necessarily making the progress to where you want to go. Yeah, awesome way to finish. Thank you so much, Nate, for your insight. I wish we could chat all day. Uh, unfortunately, at some point in time, I do have to uh, upload this video. I know that recently and excitingly, you've launched a blog, Nate, which is so cool. So if people are interested in keeping up to date with what you're doing and all the learnings that you've had, through Tanzania, through powerlifting, through life in general. Um, can you tell us maybe your Insta handle as well, but then also the name of your blog so that we can keep up to date with that? So I've started a blog recently, which is terrifying for me, but I've done it. Um, the blog, uh, the websites for that, for that is uh, navigatinglifewithnathan.co. I'm going to upload to that every week, every Monday, um, to sort of help um, put some new ideas out at the start of the week. And my Instagram handle is Nath Basso, N-A-T-H-B-A-S-S-O. -S awesome. Thank you so much for giving up your time to be here with us today, Nathan. Um, we really do appreciate hearing all your learnings and we can't wait to see what else comes out there through your blog over the next few weeks and months and years. And we'll see you guys next week for another Y Team story. Bye.